Joshua 23. We're coming down to the end of Joshua's life. This would be the final words. One more time in 24. And it came to pass a long time after that the Lord had given rest unto Israel from all their enemies round about that Joshua waxed old and stricken in age. So it's been a while since Joshua has divided the land. Everybody's been living in the land. Now we're coming to an, a, a process of time we don't know how long. Joshua calls the people and Joshua called all Israel and for their elders and for their heads and for their judges, for their officers and said to them, I am old and stricken in age. That said a lot about Joshua. And he has seen all that the Lord your God has done unto all these nations because of you. For the Lord your God is he that has fought for you. Jericho was not Israel fighting. Ai, yeah, Israel fought, but it was God. We read a time that God sent uh, hail. And the battle is the Lord's, but the men had to fight. And that's the same thing with the Bible. Yeah, man wrote the Bible, but it's the Holy Spirit that moved them. Yeah, they fought and conquered cities and the enemies. And yet God gave them the victory. Behold, I have, past tense, divided unto you by lot these nations that remain to be an inheritance for your tribe. So the dividing is done. Every tribe has got their land. The Levites have got the land inside the tribes. From Jordan with all the nations that I have cut off, even unto the great sea westward, Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea. God gave them victory. What about the other side? That's never, that's never God. And you see, like the great sea, sometimes the names are not there, but there's only one great sea that you move from Jordan westward, Mediterranean. So that all that land is, is Israel's, according to the Bible. You say, well, they're not in it yet. They've sinned against God. They've done wrong. But when Jesus Christ comes to reign, he's going to take all that land and he's going to give it to his brethren, the Jews. Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And the Lord your God, he shall expel them before you. So see, not all the enemies are gone. David and, and King Saul have problems with the Philistines. Solomon's got problems with all the people in the land. The women. And when we get to the book of Judges, Lord willing, looks like we're going to get there unless the Lord comes before two chapters and he's able I hope he does we're going to see Israel just give up now let's stop fighting let's tax them and if there's anything you need to read as Joshua into Judges we need to read the church age the same thing is what the church age said. Uh, let's stop fighting let's give into the world let's fight the world in we'll take their tithes we'll take their money and we'll do it their ways. And you've got a whole book called Judges. Where everybody does that which is right in their own eyes. That's churches to that. Joshua, Jesus Christ, he's about to die. And he leaves his final words, Israel, get right. And before he dies, they've got the idols, they've got the images, and they won't put them away. And then you got the ruckus of judges, and that is today, the ruckus. But then we got kings coming. And before King David comes, we got a King Saul who turns out right and then becomes the, one of the types of the Antichrist, chasing the seed of David around. And then David hits the throne. Man, that's not a picture of the church age. If that's not a picture of the tribulation period, and that's not a picture of Jesus Christ coming, I don't know what you have. So Joshua's going to get ready to die, and he's a type of Jesus Christ, but not fully. I mean, Joshua's not going to come out of the grave. 
between Joshua and Judges. But if Jesus dies and Joshua dies, as they both had done, and Jesus rose from the grave, that's the gospel. What is the next step for the, hist for the history and yet the point of future after the death of Jesus, the book of Judges? And you go read the seven church period. There's only one church that, that God is approved of, and God does not have anything against us, the Philadelphian church age. You got churches in there that give in to the Roman Catholic Church. Well, guess what we're going to see in Judges? They say the Roman Catholic Church is built in AD, you know, whatever. No, I'll tell you, BC, when we get to it, I will give you the date that my Bible has, and the date could be improper or wrong, but they know better than I do as far as dates. You're going to see a bunch of God's people running around and doing ungodly things as such a church age. But I believe it's John 17, the last, the, the real Lord's Prayer. And it's for us to do right. It is God, Jesus praying to God for us. They listen, God, you're not going to take them out of the world. They got to live in the world. But Lord, will you, I don't pray for the world. I pray for them. And we're going to see the same thing with Joshua. His heart is, and let's watch, verse 5. And the Lord your God, he shall expel them before you, from before you. And drive them out of your sight. They, they don't. They give in. And you shall possess the land as the Lord your God has promised you. They're in the land, but they're not going to be there long. When they get in with the Lord Jesus Christ, a thousand years are going to be in that land. Then the earth is going to wipe up. Mother Earth is going to be gone. Clean away. The heavens are going to bye bye. See you later. Get rid of all the national junk. And then you're going to get the new earth for the Jews. But ye therefore be ye therefore very con con great, uh, courage. It's okay to fear. It's okay to look at that moment and say, oh man, what am I going to do? Now, the Bible says fear, but it never says worry. Listen, that moment you walk in the kitchen and your stove is on fire, you're going to have fear. Well, don't sit there and worry, have anxiety, pick up the phone, call 911, get your fire extinguisher. Courageous. Be ready to fight. Be ready to go. It's a battle just like the Christian warfare. What does God say about the Christian? I give you armor. What is armor for? It's for fighting. A sword. A breastplate. A helmet. Those are fighting equipment. As Joshua is preparing Israel, you're going to fight. Even though you have rest. Isn't that weird? You got rest, but you're going to fight. And I have been a few times in my Christian walk where I have been in a fight. I have had agony. I have had great breakdown, and yet I have had peace. I can have somebody come cussing in my face and just say, you know, you don't know what you're doing. You have no idea what you're doing. And pray for them while they're doing that. And do all this written in the book of the law of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and Joshua. You say, Joshua, what do you mean, Joshua? Where did it say, the, was it last night? He said they wrote in the book of the law. Wrote, oh, that's 20, chapter 24, verse number 24, verse 26. And Joshua wrote these words in the book of the law of God. Well, the only place that's recorded is Joshua. And if that's the case, Joshua is also really put in there by verse 26, the book of the law. What does the law say for Joshua? This is your land. Now get in there and fight. You're not couch potatoes. That ye turn not aside there from to, to the right hand or to the left. It's almost like correcting the Bible. You don't add, you don't subtract, walk right down. That ye come not among these nations, 
these that remain among you. So there are the nations there. Joshua says there are still people here that are our enemies. I'm dead. I'm dying. I'm going the way of the earth. You're going to bury me. But you're going to have to fight. And this is a trouble when people get in churches with their pastor fellowship and pastor love. Oh, my pastor, he's great. He's wonderful. Look how great. But what are you going to do when he goes the way of the earth and dies or leaves? And I have seen the pastors of church leave, die, break, church break. And when that pastor leaves, they leave. I would assume when Joshua dies, as soon as some of the Israelites, oh, that's it, we're done, goodbye, see you, not going to do nothing. No. Now you come not among these nations, these that remain among you, neither make mention of the name of their gods. Don't even say the name of the God when you're talking. Nor cause to swear by them. Now, America, do you swear that, well, they don't do this no more, but do you swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. You mean with a Mason saying that? You mean with a Roman Catholic saying that oath? You mean with a Muslim saying that oath? A Presbyterian saying that oath? A Lutheran saying that? But what God? Atheist. Atheist. That's a joke. That's why you don't have that oath no more, because of the atheist. Why can't America at one time say, so help me God, uh, the Bible, Jehovah? I do. Now, there are names mentioned in the Bible, these gods. But Joshua says, well, don't even mention their names. There is one name, only one name given amongst men whereby you must be saved, and that's Jesus. Nor cause to swear by them, neither serve them. Oh, Junior, will you go clean to Mary? She's a little dirty out there after your father mowed the lawn. That's serving. Oh, little Johnny, you got altar boy service today. Uh. Well, this year, honey, why don't you get, get down on your knees and give out the Christmas presents under the bell bush? We're going to dust these little dollies we got in the, in the fireplace. That's how you serve them. Nor bow yourselves unto them. There's a Christmas tree. You bow down on your knees to water that thing to get the presents. You bow down to clean that Mary statue in your front yard. But you get upset because your neighbor has a scripture sign in his front yard. You get upset when a fellow Christian's got bumper stickers on his car, but you've got dollies. But cleave unto the Lord your God. Now, that, that cleave is a very interesting word to me because before I read the Bible, I, I've always thought cleaver. And cleaver is, you know, you see the butcher, he's chopping the meat. And you take off the R and you get cleave, that means stick to. More better than the super glue. You hang on to God and you stay with God. As ye have done unto this day. I'm going to say something remarkable. Maybe, maybe I'm out of whack on this one. But it says that Joshua called all Israel the, the heads, the elders, and all that. He doesn't mention tribes. But I wonder if Gad, Reuben, and half tribe of Manasseh are here. I don't know, I can't say, but here he's talking and there's two and a half tribes that are not done right. Remember years ago it was that altar Ed made. Verse 9, for the Lord has driven out from before you great nations, not all. It does say in, chapter, in verse 2, all Israel and their elders. Yes, I'm saying all Israel, so I'm just wondering. Here are two and a half tribes that they're there. They made that altar. <laughs> they are on the wrong side of the of the land where Moses gave them the land. So if that's the case, and I'm not sure, but Joshua is preaching to men of Israel that want to do right and aren't doing right. Joshua is preaching to worldly Israelites. <laughs> 
We want a, we want a little altar and we want a little God. But our great altar is better than God. And then he's preaching probably the Israelites that don't even care. And he's not in a church building. Probably outside. But great nations, not all nations, and strong. You know how you conquer the great nations and the strong nations? By God. We had a guy tell us the other day that the testimony of great cancer was whipped and nowhere to be found in the body by the testimony given by God and God alone. But as for you, no man has been able to stand before you unto this day, except for Ai. But then again, that was the sin of Achan. One man of you shall chase a thousand. And this is found in the law. In Leviticus, for the Lord your God, he it is that fight is for you as he has promised you. So the fight is not ours, it's God's. That moment say, listen, God, here's a fight, here's a battle, you're in charge, you're the captain, you just tell me what to do and I'll do it. You go. And you'll get the glory and you'll get the praise. Take good heed, not just heed, take good heed, therefore, unto yourselves. Watch yourselves that you love the Lord your God. You love him. If you love him, you'll stick by him. Else, if you do in any wise go back, backsliding, and cleave unto the raiment of these nations, and they will. Joshua is a prophet. That's what they'll do in Book of Judges. And shall make marriages with them, and they will. This is a big thing with Ezra and Nehemiah. And go on to them, and they to you. Paul says to the Christians in, in Corinthians, you can marry whoever you want, just only in the Lord. Joshua is saying, you can marry whoever you want, just not none of those people of the nation, none that are not Israelites, none that are into false God worship. And then what the law is, you're to marry within your own tribe. There were marriage restrictions put upon the Jews. We ought to have marriage restrictions put upon Christians. Bible-believing Christians. And go in unto them, and they unto you. It's a unity. We'll marry you guys, and we'll marry you guys. Know certainly, that's the first time that word shows up, that the Lord your God will no more drive out any of these nations from before you, if you marry them. If you mingle amongst them, if you have fellowship with them, if you invite, the, invite them to your assembly, God says, I'm going. I'm out of here. But they shall be snares. That's a trap. I believe that's a, it traps the foot. And traps onto you. That's a net. And scourges in your sides. That's a kind of prick. And thorns. Prickers in your eyes. It's going to put your eyes out. You're not going to be able to see. You'll be blinded. Until ye perish from off this good land, and they will. Israel goes first, and Judah goes next. Uh, Jeremiah, Ezekiel. Which the Lord your God has given you. That land was given to you guys by God. And behold this day, present time, Joshua, I am going the way of all the earth. He's going to die. Man was made from dust. He's going back to dust. And ye shall in your hearts and in all your soul that not one thing has failed of all the good things which the Lord your God spake concerning you. God has done everything he's spoken. And not one thing has failed thereof. That's a great God that we have. There's a lot of things for the Christian, for the church age has been promised to us. And it hasn't happened, but it's going to happen. It will happen. And then one day we'll be able to say chapter 23, verse 14 in heaven. 
Everything that God promises, everything that God set forth, it has happened. It is finished. It is done. It's, it's done with. It's a present testimony. Therefore, it shall come to pass that as all good things are come upon you, which the Lord your God promised you, I feel a sneeze coming, so shall the Lord bring upon you. <coughs> See, I knew. <coughs> Shoo, uh, forgive me. As God promised you, so shall the Lord bring upon you all evil things until he has destroyed you from off this good land which the Lord your God has given you. Again, Jeremiah. Again, throughout the Bible, when they rejected God, they've given in to the false worship. They've given in to the idols. They've given in to the God. They've married the people of the land. As much as God's giving that land, he's going to take you out. You know why God's going to take the church out with the rapture? Because he's got tired of the church failing and marrying with the world and doing worldly things. God's like, you know what? I'm at it with them. Only thing I can do is bring them home. And he's going to tell Israel, again, verse 15, he's going to tell them, I know what you're going to do, and I know you're going to fail, and I am going to take you out of that land. So Joshua is a prophet. And the Jews can look back to Moses and Joshua and say, the condition we are in, Ezekiel. Ezekiel is post-exile, which means Ezekiel is in Babylon after Judah has fallen. And they can come back to Joshua 23, verse 15, and say, God told you so. Now, what about the church age? When we have been finished with the judgment seat of Christ and there be people not wearing crowns that don't get inherited, we can run back to, to the Bible, Corinthians, and we can say, God told us through Paul, there is a judgment coming and your works are going to be burned by fire if it's wood, hay, or stubble. God told you. And you got to realize through Genesis to Revelation, Every judgment God gives and does, he gives a warning. There is no surprise. There is no, oh, I'm caught. What about the heathen? They've already been told about God. What about you, the heathen? How did, you know, when somebody says, how about the heathen? What about the heathen? Why don't you say, judge not, least you be judged. Well, you're a heathen. It'd be interesting to find out what people in Africa think of us over here. Are we the heathens too? That'd be interesting. When you have transgressed. Did you read what he just said? When ye have transgressed. Joshua says you're going to do it. This is a man that has walked and talked with Moses ever since the Passover night. He has been with every ordeal that Israel has threw at Moses and Aaron. And in his own ministry of 23 chapters. And what he and listen, when Israel in Jesus' time, they were in pride of Abraham. They were in pride of Moses. And Joshua says, When ye have transgressed, you see that D at the end of transgressed? That's past tense. And they're already doing it in Joshua 23. The covenant of the Lord your God, which he commanded you, and have gone and served other gods. Which he told you earlier, do not do, but you're going to do it anyway. And any parent who's raised a child understands verse 7, don't do it. And verse 16, they do it anyway. And you smack yourself in the head, but that's human nature. That's the sinful flesh. And bow yourselves to them, which they will do. First, second Kings, Sam, uh, Solomon. Then shall the anger of the Lord be kindled against you. You know, we got in Baptist churches today, Roman Catholicism. 
We have let the Roman Catholic Church in. We have let the Church of Babylonia into the churches today. And if God said, as far as the Israelites, if you put that into your fellowship, I am angry with you. Babylonian it. Now go read Ezra and Nehemiah and the Babylonianism that was among the children of Israel then. And Daniel. How bad was it in Daniel with the Babylonian worship? If you mean the entire world of Babylonia, there was only three men that did not bow down before that idol. Don't you think God would have mentioned others? Didn't he tell uh, Elijah, Elijah, oh man, I, I'm the only one left. Oh, they want to kill me. God says, I left. I think well, 500 that have not bowed their knees and kissed Baal. And when we get to Daniel, God can only find three people out there that would not fall down. Where He said, well, about Daniel? Maybe he wasn't there. So what do you think when God, when he, when he looks at the churches, what do you think Jesus thinks about his bride when it's been tampered, it's been smooching, it's been committing adultery, and it's got whoredoms with the world in it? I think he's angry. Of the Lord be kindled against you, and ye shall perish. What do you do with milk that's perished? You throw it out. You know what God does with perishing people? He throws them out. People say that the dump is, is hell. Hell is the dump. No. Hell is the incinerator where the garbage never burns. Quickly from off the good land, it's not the land which you which he that yeah, which he has given unto you. God gave it to you, you mistreated it, and God's gonna throw you out. God has given you eternal life. God has done all he can to save your soul. And you're going to go against him. And you're going to do wrong. And you're going to sin. You're going to anger him. It's not that God hates the sin and loves the sinner. Because John 3.16 is also past tense. And Joshua sets out his final word. Don't do it. And then the people of God, church, they do it. And it angers God.